Hello dear friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Julia and to start these art journal pages off I'm using an embossing folder from Sissix by Tim Holtz and some silver cardstock. I have a small mister with water and a few drops of fabric softener I, and I spray my cardstock before I run them through my die cutting machine to avoid tearing my cardstock and I get these lovely embossed panels that look like metal. Next up is this die from Studio Light that will give me this panel of gears when I run it through my die cutting machine. Now, let's bring these panels to life and I use my Versafine Onyx Black ink pad and swipe it over a panel before I cover it with black embossing powder and melt the powder with my heat tool. You could absolutely stop here. But I will continue the process that is swiping my ink pad and this time I use a copper embossing powder and melt it until shiny. You could absolutely stop here too, but I can't help myself and I do the same process again with the swiping and black embossing powder over the copper to tone down the shine and make my panels grungy and I use the black powder twice before I'm happy. For the second panel I have learned what to do. I swipe my ink pad and then I use the copper embossing powder first and only in random places before I tap off the excess. Then I come in with the black embossing powder and cover the rest of the panel before I melt it all. It took me some time, but now I have these grungy metal panels that I'm very happy with. I am making an art journal spread today and I will use my small dialogue journal from Dilutions. I find a blank spread and make sure I have blank pages behind my spread before I move on to my spray box and put papers behind the pages to protect the rest of the journal. I will use Distress Oxide sprays in squeezed lemonade, cracked pistachio and tumbled glass and as I spray I'm thinking I need some pink so I grab the nearest pink spray and it happens to be Dilution's Rose Quartz and it works very well with the vibrant pink and the more chalky oxide sprays and I spray with water and tilt the journal to make the colors move and drip. Now I love this background, I really do, but I have to tear it up some to make it fit into my vision of the end result. I tear off the upper right corner and the lower corner on the left side. When I'm done with the tearing, I move on and I want some stenciling on these pages. So I use a stencil from Letterit and Distress Oxide inks in tumbled glass, cracked pistachio, scattered straw and festive berries. I use a makeup brush and stencil in those big circles all over my background. When I'm done with the stenciling, I'm not totally satisfied with my background, so I use my spray bottle filled with water and a tad of shimmering powder Perfect Pearls, and I spray my background heavily with my pearlescent water until it makes the color move and drip down my background. Now let's grunge up these gears and I will use embossing powders in silver, gold and copper. I smoosh my Versamark embossing ink down on those gears and cover it partially with silver embossing powder and heat set until shiny.
Then I smoosh down my sticky embossing ink again and cover other parts in copper embossing powder and melt it. Finally, I smoosh for the last time and this time I cover the parts that are left in gold embossing powder and melt that too. And now I have this grungy steampunkish gears to use later. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I need these gears to be even more steampunkish and I will use this distress crayon in black suit. The crayon is like a stick of creamy pigment and I scribble on the crayon and spread it out with my fingers until I'm happy. You might not believe me, but I need more gears and I cut them out with my die cutting machine. To make these gears fit on my page, I will use copper embossing powders along with Nouveau Turquoise embossing powder and Wow's embossing powders in primary lemon and hot gossip. I start off with my Versa Mark embossing pen because I want just half of these four gears in copper. With the pen I paint in half of the gears in sticky embossing ink and cover that half in copper embossing powder and melt it. When I'm finished with the copper part of the gears, I get to work using those colorful embossing powders. I press my gears into my Versamark ink pad and cover the first three gears in Nouveau Turquoise embossing powder. And when they are all covered, I melt the powder and end up with some beautiful gears. I do the same procedure with WOW's primary lemon embossing powder, but instead of pressing the gears into the ink pad, I smoosh the ink pad over the gears before I cover them in that beautiful primary lemon and heat set until it melted and shiny. Last but certainly not least, I do the same with WOW's glitter embossing powder called Hot Gossip and the result is just lovely. When I have all my colourful gears, I go back to those gears with copper embossing on half of the gears. I use my Versamark pen and paint in the other half and cover them in all of the bright colours I just used. And I, it will become clear to you why I did this, but for now they are just gorgeous. Now, let's move on to that crazy background and I use my Versamark ink pad and smoosh it down on the torn edges before I cover them in silver embossing powder and melt it. And if I didn't get silver on the whole torn edge, I use the Versamark pen to touch up the edges and cover again with silver embossing powder. And I do the same on both edges. When my background is how I want it, I move on to those embossed panels from the beginning and I use a double sided adhesive sheet and put both panels on the side, on one side and cut them out. So this is how I will use those panels. I use my torn edges as a template and a pencil to mark where I want my grungy metal panels and then I just pull off the backing of that other adhesive side and stick them down and I cut smaller pieces to make sure that the only thing peeking out behind the background is these faux metal pieces.
Next up is the metal gears and I cut the panel up so it will fit in on that metal peeking out behind the background and I glue those gears down. And the gears left over, I glue down where I want more gears. I even cut them in half to be used peeking out behind my colorful background. When all the metal gears are in place, it's time for the gears that are half copper and half colorful embossing powders. I am careful when I stick them down. I want the metallic copper half to be on the edge and hanging over the metallic part of this background. But the colorful part is on the main background. It's finally time for my main focal point, which is this gorgeous steampunk girl and her hat from All and Create. While I drink my beloved coffee, I'm rubbing my hand over this new stamp to get rid of any residue and get a good impression. I stamp her and her hat in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because I plan to color her with my Uhuhu alcohol markers. And I stamp her a few times. I'm using my Uhuhu markers and start off with her dress, which is simple because I plan to keep it mostly white. I use three shades of green on her corset, going light to dark and back again. For the belt on the hat, I use three shades of brown and for the belt buckle, the spikes on the goop goggles and the key in the middle, I use a gold gel pen and a green one for the stones on the key. For the hat itself, I use two shades of grey and some black, going lightest to darkest and back again. Here is where I go crazy with the details in pursuit of dimension. I stamp my images a few times and I cut out the belt and the goggles with spikes and the key. And I also cut out the gear that is one of the eyes on the girl. And I won't stop there, but for now these will be colored in off camera and I will focus on the girl and the coloring. I decide to go with pink hair and I use three shades of pink. I start with the lightest and use the medium shade and the darkest to give her shadow and dimension. And then I blend it all out with my lightest at the end. It's now time to color her skin and I start light to see how that works but soon I go darker and even darker to give her face some shadows and when it's all said and done I love how she turned out exactly how I imagined her. It's now time to focus on the crazy details again and I cut out another of her eyes and then I bring out my blade and cut out the pieces in her gear eye so it will be see-through when I glue her to the background. I cut out an extra eye for my girl and glue that into place. Then I glue an extra gear eye onto the girl and of course I cut out the pieces from the gear so her eye will continue to be see-through. Then I glue down the extra belt on the hat and the cut out goggles and then it's time to fussy cut out both the hat and the girl. I am back with the back 
ground and believe it or not, there is more work to be done to make it how I want it. I'm using a well-loved stamp with text and a clock. I don't use an acrylic block because I'm not going for perfection. I just want to add some interest and I stamp randomly with both black and brown ink. I have this idea of heat embossed brush strokes, so I start by treating the whole spread with my anti-static bag. The brushes are stolen from my kids craft stash and they are exactly what I need to get those rough brush strokes. I pull out my embossing dauber and pour some of it, that sticky embossing ink, on my glass mat and dip my brush in it. I make a few brush strokes, holding the bristles of the brush separated with my hand to get those visible strokes and covering them in silver embossing powder and melt it before I do the same thing again. But this time I use copper embossing powder and take great care to separate those bristles and when it's all melted I have metallic brush strokes on my background. I hope you see what I do as inspiration and not something you're supposed to do. I often get lost in the details but there are so many things you can do to make things easier if you struggle. There are pre-made backgrounds and booklets full of cut-out images to use and there are so many ways to art journal and there are no art journal police, so just do what makes you happy. After all that heat embossing, I used that distress crayon again that my friend Linda sent me and I go around the edges to achieve that dark frame. It's finally time to start putting things together and I have my colorful gears and the girl with her hat. She already has some dimension but I will give her more. But first I will work on my background and those fabulous gears. I use art glitter glue that aren't glittery at all but it dries clear and have that thin tip that helps if you're heavy handed like me. I start with the pink hot gossip gears and glue them down where there's pink in the background. And when a gear is going to be in the middle of the spread, I cut it in half to make it easier to close the journal. Then I glue down the turquoise gears and finally the yellow primary lemon gears. I cut off anything hanging off the edges and glue down my colorful background onto the steampunkish background. I have two extra steampunk girls and here is where I go off the deep end with the details and the dimension. I cut out her tiny lips and two of each of the puffy parts on her dress along with another extra eye and another gear eye. I use a distress crayon in tarnished brass to give her gear eye a metallic finish. And I go around the edges of every little detail and image with a black marker. I use tweezers to glue down two of each of the puffy parts on her skirt. And I also glue down an extra eye on the two already there. And I glue down two of each of the puffy sleeves and arms for maximal dimension. My biggest mistake on this project comes here when I use a wet wipe and accidentally smudged black all over the white sleeve. But fear not, my friends, I just stamp the girl again and cut out that sleeve, the collar and the other sleeve and arms into another single layer. I glue down my final layer on her dress and then I stick down that mini mouth of hers and the third gear eye. 
for a sentiment I chose to go with the one in the same stamp set saying, let's do the time warp again, and I stamp it in Versamark embossing ink, cover it with WOW's vanilla white embossing powder and melt it. I cut it down with my guillotine trimmer, but I want a layer behind it, so I use the ranger dauber with embossing ink on a scrap piece of cardstock and cover it with that hot gossip embossing powder from WOW and melt it before I mount my sentiment on it and cut it down so I have a hot gossip border around my sentiment. Now, let me give you a look at the dimension we created, the puffy skirt and arms, the regular eye and the gear eye. And then the hat with the dimensional goggles and the belt. I glue down the girl, the hat and the sentiment. I need the girl and the hat to have a shadow to ground them and I use that distress crayon again for the shadows and I go around the girl with a black marker. I have a habit of making highlights with a white gel pen and this is no exception and as a last detail I use glossy accents on the goggles on the hat, the girl's eye and her gear eye and with that these mixed media or journal pages are finished. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing. You mean the world to me. Until the next time, see you soon.